I'm Mike Gibson and Chris White coming to you live from Sky 2017. Chris, you just gave uh, the Founders Lecture talking about opportunities and challenges uh, in interventional cardiology. Talk to us uh, about the first challenges, but then give us a little ray of light at the end about some of the opportunities. Sure, Mike. So <clears throat> the, the challenges are, I think, pretty plain. We can all articulate them. The concern I have, and, and I think the focus of my talk this morning, was actually more of a call to action. I think that there's a real concern between when does the transition occur from volume to value. Correct. I think we all can say these words, volume to value. Right. We know the right thing to say when asked. We're told to say them, yes. We're told. But we all know that if we make the conversion too quickly, it's a huge loss for us because right. people still will pay us for the value. Right. right. Or the volume, I'm sorry. Volume, sure. <clears throat> and so people are hesitant or unsure of how to commit to value. What I did today was I sort of outlined that we are in fact today in a transition period. Mm -hmm. We are in a measuring cycle for MACRA. Mm -hmm. uh, things we do today will affect our reimbursement uh, the next year and the year after. In a substantial way. In a substantial, plus and minus 4% to start all it's the way big, up to 9%. When you have a 2 to 3% margin, 4% is a lot. And I don't think the average interventionalist understands that we're in this transition, right? right? They, they still think they're being paid to, uh, for volume. Mm -hmm. You look at readmission penalties, uh, again, it's another way to pay us for quality outcomes, not, not for numbers of, mm -hmm. of procedures done. And then, of course, next year the bundles uh, come. And if we're not prepared today with pathways and ways to minimize variation in our practices, um, we can't hope, really, to be successful in bundle management. Um, Bundle management will be difficult for us. We're not used to taking care of people for 30, 60, 90 days. Right. Um, we're used to sending people back to their referring doctors, back to their... For 30, 60, 90 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if they get out of the cath lab without a complication, we right. call it a victory and let's move on. Right? Correct. And I think that's, again, one of the items I used during the talk this morning was, was that there was a time in my career when I really believed uh, that open arteries were better than closed arteries. Mm -hmm. But what I realize now is that's not an outcome. Right. And uh, as uh, Dr. Nash says, uh, you know, no outcome, no income. Yes. And so the idea that interventionalists would, would think that making arteries look pretty and open and good, if you cannot link that to an outcome, either a functional sta status or mortality or some tangible measurable benefit, then you're not going to get paid for it. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we're all going to be at risk. Right. And so then it's not who's going to pay me, it's going to be what do I want to pay for. Right. And I'm not going to pay to put nine stints in someone who won't, can't tell the difference. Right. Or somebody who has GI abdominal pain that right. somebody in the emergency room called chest pain. Sure. And of course I put, this, I put stints in that person um, and they come back in three weeks with that same GI pain and I find a little OMB that now needs another stint. And you know, it's this classic, you know, the guy who's over the last six months had four trips to the cath lab with multiple stenting, each one right. getting smaller and smaller, that makes me pull my fellow aside and say, what, are we what do you here? think's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think's going on here? Yeah. Those are the things, those are the behaviors that we have not questioned, not held ourselves accountable to. And, uh, you know, they don't cause harm to patients necessarily. I mean, I, we can look for ways we have caused harm, but many of the times the things we do just don't provide value. Correct. And the patients want them. Mm -hmm. Big they difference. Expect them. Big difference between patient engagement. Mm -hmm. Big difference between being patient centered and patient satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not. I'm not here to make patients happy. Mm -hmm. I'm here to make patients well. I'm right. here to make patients better. And in fact, I think there's some data that suggests if you make them happy, they do less well. Yes. Um, you know, you, you're not here to give them what they want. You're right. here to provide, be a physician, and and to tell them what they need. One of the hardest things I teach fellows. But there's a conflict here because now we live in the yelpification of medicine. And if you're not making them happy, they yelp. So it's, yeah. uh, it's right now we're in a problematic phase. So this is where the master clinicians teach because nobody walks out of my office unhappy. Right. right. I make them feel loved. I right. know how to do this. Right. right. I've been doing this for a long time. Yes. And I can flip them around. from. That's what being a doctor is. Right. And now that's what I'm supposed to teach fellows. Right. Right. I don't teach fellows how to put stints in as many atypical chest pains as possible. Correct. I teach fellows how to engage their patient, how to make the patient actually believe I want your, what's good for you. And you know what? Out of everything I've heard at this meeting, that's probably the most profound and truest statement at this meeting. <laughs>
not true. I think it is true. No, I, I think we've got to move beyond just putting stents in and, and, and also being, uh, you know, attuned to what's really driving that discomfort. Right. It may not be, <laughs> it may be something other than uh, ischemia. And in fact, in my position, uh, you know, in, I'm in my position at Oxnard in a leadership role and I, I determine compensation, we're not talking about less compensation. Right, mm -hmm. I think most physicians feel like if they do less widgets, I'm gonna pay them less. Right. Not necessarily, right? right. I'm gonna pay them a distribution of, of the wealth. Right. And so if they're bringing in more business, if we're actually managing our patients better, I see physicians' compensation being unthreatened by this transition. Yeah. It's not a one for one. Yeah, that's So good. I, I don't want anybody being scared. This is just a way for me to cut your pay. Sure. I'm gonna pay you for the value you bring to the organization. Sure. Uh, that's hard to argue with. Chris, thanks so much. Great <laughs> message. My pleasure, Mike. And thanks for joining us all here live from Sky 2017.